yeah, this isn't superhero fatigue. People just are tired of seeing bad movies. Hey, what's up, nerd fam? This is your boy, Gershon. Wanna welcome you to Enter the Nerd. Today, I just wanna talk a little bit about the state of the MCU, specifically after I just uh, watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is supposed to be the start of Phase 5, which is beyond weak. Let's just be uh, rather honest. And the MCU has already been on the decline um, as far as sales, as far as quality, so many things, right? And let me just start off by saying this, just preface what I'm gonna say here. I have been into comic books and comic book related things since, uh, single digits, right? My uncles got me into it, my stepfather got me into it. And yes, when it comes to adaptations, I do lean on source material. It's not wrong. Um, it just, it is what it is, right? And I can understand why there are people who have never read the source material and I don't blame them for that. I'm just trying to tell you like where my leanings are so you understand where the rest of this video is going. And I don't need it to be a one-to-one -one example, but it does make sense that you lean more on the, on the thing that has already been proven to work by way of the character's development, right? And you would think that they would base this more on the comic, seeing as how that's where all these, co these uh, comic book characters originate. But the more these phases go on, it's clearly just kind of become more of a free-for-all where they're just like, okay, well, yeah, he's named Batman or, pardon me, at DC, um, he's named Spider-Man, but He's getting further and further away from the qualities that make Spider-Man Spider-Man. I got you. It's not good, especially because Spider-Man is my favorite character. So, you know, they, they've done all the characters rather dirty. But can this be fixed? I think it could be. But they would just have to trick, take a drastically different approach on everything that comes after. Where it's characters first, ego second. So not, how can I make this movie mine? Just, what do people like about this, this character? What has made this character successful for the decades that it has actually existed? What storylines are very, very good here? And not just the ones that I like, because that seems to happen a lot, especially when it comes to what's going on even in another company in DC, when you, you know, James Gunn kept saying, I like, I like, versus what the fans like, right? But once again, let me not go to DC. Let me stay over here with Marvel, right? Let's be honest. Even the people who used to kind of shill for these movies or stand for them, because shill would be more like the people who get paid to review. So stand for the movies, even they can't defend it. And why is that? Because even within the confines of their universe, it's just not very good by way of storytelling. So what do we do? How do we make a more cohesive universe? Well, Number one, I would say if you really want to make this better, pay attention to the comics by way of if you're going to do a solo movie, make sure it's a solo movie that's really servicing that character and not just making a solo movie to service whatever comes next. Because if you notice, when it comes to Marvel, the film is not really about the film, it's about what comes next. So like in Ant-Man, the whole Quantumania or whatever, it was all about Loki season two. All of this was just set up to something else versus this movie is about what's happening with this character. And these like standalone solo movies are to strengthen this character. And then once they finally team up, all those characters that were strengthened by their solo movies, they're, they were great on their own. But when they come together, you appreciate them more. They don't care about that. They're just trying to strengthen the next project, strengthen the next project. And it sucks because the current thing that you're watching suffers from that. And they come out with so many things like the Disney Plus shows, which I think Disney Plus shows, like those streaming shows and the films, them tying together is not, it's actually an awesome idea, but the execution sucks because it seems like the people who are making the films and making the shows, that they barely even talk to each other to make sure they've got their story straight. Look at WandaVision and the Doctor Strange movies. Like those people didn't even talk. What's the point in having all these things exist in the same universe if they're not cohesive. They have a guy in Kevin Feige who, who says like he's looking over everything, but the quality control seems to not be there. And the audience is starting to see it. The CGI, 
what's happening with the visual effects department. It's becoming evident by way of these Disney shows. There's a lot of characters that nobody really asked for. They did not do particularly well in the comics, but they want to adapt them here because they like them. But what storylines and characters do the people who are reading and put all this money and time, which ones do they like? Why don't you cater to them first because the general audience doesn't know the difference either way. But now you're starting to get less and less of the general audience. How about if you are switching genres, which is also another way to keep it fresh, make sure it's something that people are actually interested in. Like, it's cool if you have like a horror movie, but make sure that it's actually good. What do you mean by good? Isn't that subjective? It is. But a person being able to understand how a story got from point A to point B, I think anyone can appreciate that. Like, for example, phases one through three were not perfect, but you know how we got to Thanos. Since then, this has gone a whole bunch of different places. Like now we're in a multiverse saga. And the multiverse saga seems to be a kind of way for them to make things matter and not matter at the same time. If we're being honest here. Especially when it comes to the fact that they killed off characters that should still be here. Iron Man. Steve Rogers is apparently around here still old. Why did Black Widow have to die? These are all characters that should still be here. They have a lot more story to give. And you can still add new characters. And they can have plenty of time to breathe on that streaming network. They could have their own shows away from there. Because not everyone has to get their own movie. But they could get a little short limited show which will give them enough time to expand on certain characters. They're not thinking that way. I would think the Disney Plus would be a great way to even introduce the X-Men. Especially because the X-Men have different groups like X-Factor, Excalibur, X-Force, things like that. And really get people to know those characters. And there's so many, and they talk about diversity and representation. X-Men has so many of them. But why are we in phase five? And they acquired the rights back from Fox a long time ago. Why are we hearing about it from Namor and Mar and Miss Marvel? Like, why weren't like the seeds sown then, like years ago? This seems to me like they don't really have a well-planned out story for them. And whenever they do come out, it's most likely gonna be very lackluster. Especially because we know this whole Deadpool 3 is going to probably incorporate some stuff here, but now you're bringing back Hugh Jackman. And I think that's going to be, it might be entertaining, let's say that, I think it's gonna be entertaining. But I think for the long run, shouldn't we just introduce a new Wolverine, a new X, like just, let's just do whatever you, like whatever mutants are coming, just have them be already casted brand new. Let's just start from there, rather than having people look to the past. But, Kevin Feige was part of those X-Men movies at Fox a while back. So he's almost writing a love letter to himself when it comes to this type of thing. Which once again, characters in universe first versus ego. Not what, if I'm the creator, if I'm like the person who's heading up this universe, I'm going, how did these characters work? Let me work smarter and not harder. Let me look at how these were shaped up in the comics. Which storylines were super impactful. How do I adapt them faithfully so that not only the comic book fans could get something out of it, but the general audience could be entertained and those two audiences could talk about something in common. So now the general audience goes, what's this? Oh, this, this is interesting. And the comic book guys go, let me talk to you about it. That doesn't exist now. And the further and further they get from it, it's harder to even have those conversations. Because some of these general audience, for some reason, they're like, oh, I don't need to read that, blah, blah. And in a way, they don't. Because this is such a far departure. And they're still making money. Even if it's not as much money as they're making, they're still making money. So there's no real incentive for them to stop the bullshit. But how long will that keep on going? But they can't keep on blaming superhero fatigue. Because whenever something refreshing comes out, like, even though Invincible has been, been around for a long time, when that show came out, everybody loved it. Are people tired of the boys? No, because it was fresh, it was quality. But there are so many different characters in Marvel that don't have the same tone, that have vastly different stories, 
that could be super interesting, whether it's X-Men, whether it's any of the, the different groups of the Avengers, whether it's a lot of the cosmic superheroes, or maybe even some of the, the obscure characters that people don't really know too much about. That could, that as soon as they get on that big screen or streaming, they'll become more popular. Now, a lot of that is happening now with characters that people didn't necessarily like. I mean, we have an Agatha Harkness show. They saw that people liked the Agatha song and they were like, she deserves a whole show. Who really asked for that? Is Ironheart, was she that popular in the comics? The sales will tell you, was she? Is Miss Marvel this immensely powerful character? Not saying that they can't be in it, but they're pushing them like, like they're pushing them like people were just clamoring for these characters and people who were in the comic book shops were not, didn't have that same idea. So where are they getting this from? And why didn't you just keep these people around? Even if Robert Downey Jr. said, I don't want to be Iron Man anymore. All right, recast. If Chris Evans said the same thing, recast. The character is important. Steve Rogers still had more left, more left in him. Alongside Sam Wilson, who I think he should still be Falcon because Falcon did amazing things in the comic and had his own in his own right. But now it's like, nope, Steve Rogers gone. Captain America, Falcon, Captain Falcon, whatever. And there's not much legs when it comes to that. Especially because when they tell that story, we understand what they're trying to do there. They did it in Falcon and Winter Soldier. But one thing that I can't stand that's happening is like, they just keep on skipping. You'll skip 30 years of great story just to go and adapt comics that did poorly in sales. Why are you adapting things that most people who read it didn't even like? It just looks like you got tired of making quality things. And not once again, phase one to three wasn't perfect, but arguably it was much better and had a much better direction than what we have right now. And you can keep on blaming the, you can keep on blaming the audience or you could just, you know, look at yourself and notice maybe we should do something different. Maybe we should actually care about the properties that we have. And maybe look to the people who were drawing and writing and creating these characters and put their blood, sweat and tears into them to make them come to life as respectful as they were when they were on the page. And I think the MCU would be a lot greater. But that's just my opinion. Someone who loves comics, loves all types of nerd stuff, and wants to be able to share it with the general audience while being entertained watching it. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you agree. Do you think the MCU is great how it is? Do you think it's going down in quality? Let me know. What do you think should be done? Is it savable? Should we just start over? Because to be honest, if I could have my preference, I would start over. Because we're at this weird point where we're getting to that point of no return. But there's, there's some things that we could, we could fix, but I think the people who are involved in it aren't capable of doing that. If I'm being honest, these are not people who are that talented and I'm just getting that based off of what I'm saying. But either way, let me know what you think about it. Let's talk about it in the, in the comments and to the nerd.